cuento ahora. Mr. S Mr. Clark, sitting today as a Speaker of the House, pending the election of the Speaker, I want to rise on a point of order just before we get into details of the order that you've called out on election of Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the Senate. Uh, Mr. Clark, the point of order that I rise on is uh, order number four that deals with the election of Speaker. I want to also deal with it alongside Article 98 of the Constitution that defines the Constitution of this Senate. And this Senate comprises of 47 elected senators plus another number that shall be nominated to this House. Mr. Speaker, all senators are equal Yes, the clerk is sitting as a speaker, so uh, I'll use that reference interchangeably. All the 67 senators here are equal. Once they've taken the oath, all the 67 senators here have got an equal right to vie for the position of deputy speaker of the Senate. Mr. Clark, you will note that the gazettement of the 20 nominated senators was done just yesterday and that was less than 48 hours to the election of the speaker which we are about to conduct. Furthermore, you will notice that by the time the nominated senators were gazetted and even brought to this house for induction, the period for application for the position of deputy speaker had already been closed. Mr. Clark, this is extremely important because the 20 nominated senators represent the marginalized sections of this country. They represent women, they represent youth, they represent persons with disability. And not only on this side, Mr. Clark, it is across the aisle. What I'm raising is not a partisan objection. The nominated senators that are sitting in front of me had a right to apply for the position of Deputy Speaker of the Senate. Mr. Speaker, the foundation upon which we start this Senate shall determine and shall dictate whether this Senate shall always look out for the rights of the marginalized and shall always stand for the rule of law. Therefore, Mr. Clark, my point of order is that we cannot disenfranchise one third of this Senate. We cannot disenfranchise 50% of the population that is represented by the women senators who have been nominated to represent gender interests. We cannot disenfranchise 60% of the population of this country that is youth as represented by the senators who represent the youth. Therefore, Mr. Clark, my objection and where, the, the, where I want you to clarify is that we cannot proceed with election for speaker and deputy speaker until the rights of nominated members of the Senate have been respected and until they've been accorded an opportunity to put in their application. Mr. Clark, we've got very capable nominated senators here. Senator Kamar was our deputy speaker. I look across the aisle, I see the senator who's sitting on that chair, written deputy majority leader, her composure and her outlook shows me that she can be a very good deputy speaker. Let us create an opportunity, a window for people to apply and then let us do the right things. Finally, Mr. Clark, and I know someone will argue that it was the work of IBC to gazette the nominated senators. We as a Senate cannot take the wrong decisions because IBC took the wrong decisions. We know, and these standing orders, Mr. Clark, another objection is that Applications are to be done 48 hours to this election. In your notice, you amended it unilaterally and put the deadline to 2.30 of yesterday. I'm not complaining about that. Whether it was 2.30, the nominated senators still did not have an opportunity to apply. We cannot, as a House, do things unprocedurally, trample on the rights of our women and youth simply because the IBC decided to be lazy simply because the IBC decided to run away from their duty. 
And you have seen the kind of mess the IBC has brought uh, into this country. So let the foundation of this Senate, which some of us have sat in for quite some time, not be a foundation of impunity, not be a foundation of denying the rights of our women and youth. And Mr. Clark, it would be important that you rule on that. And my prayer would be that this exercise and this order be suspended until everyone has been given an opportunity to participate in the rightful manner. Clark, Clark, point of order. Point of order, Clark. Yeah.